What's up, everybody? Happy Saturday. Hope you're having a great weekend. Hope you guys are doing well. Another Game 7. Pacers versus Knicks. It doesn't get any better than this. Back at MSG on Sunday, when the Pacers fell behind 2-0 in, in their series versus the New York Knicks, everybody thought Indiana was done. I said the series was over. This series looked like it was over. When Indiana faced elimination in Friday's Game 6, Rick Kyle Lau challenged his players. Kyle Lau is a guy who is going to get the best out of his players. I think you credit him for the job he's done. There was a newfound energy after Indiana's 30-point Game 5 loss in New York. I like how he gets after his players, instills confidence in them. You got guys that step on, on the floor and bring a presence and energy and confidence to the game. TJ, TJ McConnell, look, I mean, look at what he's done in this series. Coming off the bench, providing a spark. He's like the Energizer Bunny. Keeps going and going. His aggression, toughness, and focus. You look at what he brings to the table. A guy who can attack the basket, unafraid to attack the basket. And then on the other end, the impact on defense, a tenacious defender. Kyle Lau got a strong response and effort from his young team in a game six victory that evened the series at 3-3. The rivalry is back, ladies and gentlemen. We got a renewed rivalry the Pacers and the Knicks, you know, and the Pacers didn't play well in the prior game. After losing the rebound battle by 24 in game five, the Pacers won, won it by 12 in game six. Huge difference. They took better care of the ball after turning the ball over 18 times in game five. They had just eight turnovers in game six, and this time they didn't get outscored after getting outscored by 26 points in the paint in game five. Indiana scored 24 more than the Knicks in game six. Pascal Siakam, who had 25 points in his best game of the series, took matters into his own hands, showed up and delivered. Miles Turner did his thing, scoring 17 points. They played harder. They played harder. Uh, they took care of the basketball. You know, um, they just looked like a team that wanted it more. They wanted to win this time, and they did just that. And when you look at this Pacers team, man, they they like to play fast, loose, and they can get out and beat you in transition. Indiana's speed uh, makes any team look old. And and see, that's what they, they do. They wear you down with their up-tempo style, their speed. Speed kills. You, you have to slow down the pace when you're playing against them because this is a team that turns the game into a track meet. And if the Knicks can't control the pace of the game by slowing by slowing the game down, then this is a track meet. What people didn't take into consideration also was that the Knicks are shorthanded. They're, they're shorthanded, undermanned due to injuries. The injuries have piled up on this team. Their do-everything player, Josh Hart, Suffered an abdominal injury after going for a rebound, and he's a fighter. I mean, he's a he's a fighter. When he's on the floor, he's fighting for rebounds, hustling for loose balls, and doing all the little things that can turn into quick points. Hart labored through the game before finally coming out in the fourth quarter. Um, he. Did manage to grab eight rebounds and still played more than 30 minutes. I mean, it's been wear and tear on these guys' bodies, but he was not his usual self. You can see he wasn't making the same impact that he usually does. You had guys playing heavy minutes. I mean, for the Knicks, fatigue was definitely a factor throughout this series. Fatigue was inevitably going to catch up with them. They looked exhausted in game five, the, mother, the Mother's Day Massacre, where they got completely humiliated and obliterated. I know 
that was a long flight back to New York. But one thing I can say about the Knicks, they have no quit in them. They don't quit. They don't let up. Tired or not, they keep finding ways to get that one win, that much-needed win to stay alive. And now they will try it again in Game 7 at home where they really play well. You have the home crowd behind you. Historically, the home team usually wins in Game 7. And throughout this series, at times, the the Pacers have showed their youth. You know, lazy defense, no rebounds, dumb turnovers. They played bad in Game 5. When the Knicks have offensive rebounds and 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 have second and third shot opportunities, they're going to beat you. You know, Nubhart is Nubhart, excuse me, is a great player, but he shouldn't be assigned to defend Bronson. I think they learned their lesson. Uh he broke his ankles all night in game 5. If McConnell comes off the bench and puts pressure on Bronson, then the Pacers can steal Game Seven, and, and if Tyrese H- Halliburton explodes and set the tone early, then Indiana has a chance. This will come down to who is the fastest and strongest. It's a battle of attrition at this point. OG and Anobis health looms large. I'm not sure you're getting him back anytime soon. He's been out since. Uh, sustaining an an hamstring injury in the fourth quarter of game two, but his return is a possibility for Sunday. We'll see. But I do know this. They miss him. His presence, probably the most versatile defender. In a time like this, the Knicks can definitely use him. Strong and definitely an impactful defender. And then what he can do offensively. His strength and explosive when he's on the floor allows him to finish effectively in the paint. So it'll be nice if the Knicks can get him back in this series. It, 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 it will help tremendously. If the if you're the Pacers, you can't let Bronson go back home, MSG, where he plays well, and let him drop 40 on you. Jalen has been absolutely phenomenal all season long. And all postseason now. He's not a traditional guard. No, he's not. You know, he's a he's a shoot first guard, pass second type guard, you know. But they need him. They need for him to to set the stage in game seven and go beast mode along with the supporting cast. You gotta get something out of Isaiah Harton Stein. I always butcher his name, sorry. Miles uh, McBride has to has to show up and do his thing. I mean, you got to have the supporting cast around you as well. If you get if you get points from those guys, Dante DiVincenzo, I always butcher his name too. I mean, these names are not easy to say, but you guys know who I'm talking about. Those guys are gonna have to be uh, huge in this game as well. But we got a game seven. It's so it's a, it's the winner take all game. Um. It's, it's set for Sunday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern. And, man, it's going to be one hell of a show. But behind a lockdown defensive effort from Indiana, Indiana was able to defeat the Knicks. And, you know, that's the same approach if you're the Pacers that you have to take uh, going into Game 7. You got to try to neutralize Bronson. You can't really let him go to work early. Uh, you can't really let him get into a rhythm. You got to take him out of the game early as well as the rest of the the Knicks uh, players. But we'll see what happens. It's going to be a great Game 7. We're in for a treat, for sure. Uh, This is what you love if you're an NBA fan. And we'll see who will come out on top. Thanks for watching, everyone. Really appreciate the love and support. We'll talk very soon. Don't forget to do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button. Talk to you guys very soon.